Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. My name is Sean Dex, and I welcome you back to the Mango Grow for a daily Bitcoin and Chainlink analysis video. And you know what? If you have the time, I may just go over another altcoin that I put a trade on for um, earlier today. So if we have the time, though, if we have the time. However, today's focus will be Bitcoin and Chainlink as usual. And hey, Bitcoin. <laughs> doing pretty much nothing, simply chopping up, chopping down, chopping up everybody's BTC, at least all the people who are not being patient, right? People who are well, giving in to their urge to put on the trade, urge to chase an opportunity. And hey, these are the low timeframes. And we've been discussing this, the low timeframes are more likely to punish you, right? And I do want to, in a way, Elaborate on what I discussed yesterday. If you guys do remember, yesterday I discussed how I am uncomfortable in my long position, right? And that happens often. There's a lot of times I'm very, very uncomfortable, not just when I am in a trade, often when I am not in a trade as well. For example, this entire run when Bitcoin was going from 7,700 all the way up to 10,000, I was uncomfortable watching it run without being in the trade, right? Especially since Krisha was in the trade, it makes it that much harder. You want to form into the trade. And I'm sure you guys can relate to this. How often have you seen a friend or a trader friend be in a position and he's making money or she's making money and you want to just get in on that action, right? And you finally give in, you take the position and it happens to be just when the asset or most of the case, it's most of the time it's Bitcoin. Just when Bitcoin hits its top or hits a major resistance and it comes down, having a drawdown, and all you have to wait was just a little bit more and you get a better position, right? How often has that happened to you? But why did you do it? Why did you actually just put on the trade anyways? Because you chose the comfortable thing to do, even though it is the wrong thing to do, even though it is the um, harder trade, right? And I want to I want to um, expand on that. Actually, this is the this is the funny, ironic thing about human emotions, right? It makes us take the harder trades only because it is the comfortable thing to do. Right now, it is comfortable to be chasing these trades. It is comfortable to be putting on a position and waiting for the break towards the upside, even though we are sitting at major monthly and weekly resistance. We'll be talking about that um, very very soon, but. How funny is that, right? It is comfortable to do the hard things. It is uncomfortable to do the easy things and the right things. And by easy and right, I mean being patient and waiting for the easy trades. Where are the easy trades? Along our major daily and weekly levels, right? Daily 21 EMA, weekly 21 EMA. How easy have our mango trades been, guys? Very stress-free, very easy, but they have been uncomfortable, right? I want you guys to sit on that, think on that, leave a comment down below if you guys can relate. I really wanna know your thoughts on that. And yeah, guys, the mango way, the stress-free way, but it requires patience. So in today's video, we will be going over the higher timeframes, the weekly and the monthly. I want to drill that down into your heads. Here we have the four hour time frame on the Mango Research dashboard. And as you guys can see, it um, did flip long today. So looking good, this may lead to that upside break. And hey, um, would I trade simply on this? No, of course not. I do also wanna mention that the two day time frame did flip neutral, right? And this is what I mean by Look at the holistic picture, guys. Look at all the clues given to you and then put on your trade. That's how we got our really, really nice trade from 8,452, right? Everything lined up. The dashboard lined up. The mango vine lined up. Man uh, the, mango, um, the mango ribbon lined up. Man, I almost forgot what the indicator name was. So yeah, we had a lot lining up. This is a link, actually. We will come back to it in a bit. This is Bitcoin on the six hour time frame. And you know what? Um, let's talk about this really quickly as well. The six our time frame we did talk about this in yesterday's video towards the end and we were talking about how the mango ribbon um you have some really nice trades off this right on the 21 ema all you have to do was buy the 21 ema sell the top of the trend line buy the 21 ema sell the top of the trend line you're probably wondering sean what trend line we don't have it drawn here we drew it in yesterday's video we drew something like this right um candle closes this wick over here something like this so this has been getting respected as you can see on the last six hour candle it got respected perfectly right touched the 21 ma bounced and 
basically got rejected off the top of the trend line. So there are trades to be had if you do want to look at the midterm time frames, guys. But um, you have to be very careful that you don't keep getting stopped out of your position just because you're looking for a break to the upside or towards a um, downside move, right? Now, I'm not saying a break is not going to come. I'm saying be very, very careful that you don't um, end up in a situation where you are getting cut a thousand times, right? So it's death by a thousand cuts. And by the time you do have the actual break, you're just too mentally exhausted to put on the next trade. And just when you give up, the break shows up, right? So that's why I like the easier trades. Now, I'm not saying this is not a viable strategy, by all means, this would have been great. If you're looking only for scalps, you get in, get out, get in, get out. What I've been doing is I've been basically selling the 9750 strikes and just collecting the premium on those calls, right? To me, that is a lot simpler and keeps it stress-free. But um, yeah, like Bitcoin might break up over here, right? And if we do see a six-hour candle close, two six-hour candle close is what I'll be looking for. That's when I'll be convinced that, hey, you know what? This may be going up. Bitcoin does look like, apologies. Bitcoin does look like it wants to be um, making another attempt towards the top of that trend line. But again, you guys know how I feel about um, diagonals. Honestly, I'd rather use a horizontal over here too. And we did have a discussion on this on um, the Mango Grove chat. So you guys are probably familiar with what um, I'm talking about, but I'll elaborate on that a little bit before we move on to the higher timeframes. I'll be using this horizontal line over here. I know a lot of you might be looking for this horizontal at 10,010 ish, but um, to me, this is going to be a key horizontal at around 9,853. It also does line up with the diagonal, right? So why is this horizontal important to me? Well, let's go ahead and remove these the mango ribbon for now and get some get a clear chart to me this horizontal is important because we broke to the upside over here we had some consolidation you're looking for a test 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 and then break to the upside right well we didn't get that we got the opposite and said we broke back down into the range tested it and saw follow through so follow through a strong follow through to the downside so this horizontal does become key came up tested once got rejected one, two, three, follow through again. But yes, we're putting in higher low, so that's bullish. Now we're coming to test it again. So we're consolidating against that. Now, do we break, confirm above it? I'll be looking for a break towards the upside. Do we have a measured move to look at? Well, there's two ways you can be looking at it. Aggressive would be something like this. Um, now, <laughs> do we actually play this out? Is this a cup and handle or something, guys? You, you guys know what I feel about patterns. I mean, I don't have a feeling about patterns. I just... It's not my, it's not my thing, right? It's Krisha's thing, pattern queen. 11,250, I like that, I like that, I like that a lot. Um, but would I be, would I be looking at that? No, um, I'd be looking at, you could look at this as a weird cement. Bull flag, right? Bull flag, wait, what do you know? This is a bull flag and so multiple ways to draw this let's go ahead and have some fun let's have some fun today so let's go ahead and draw the possible symmetrical triangle let's be a little bit more conservative and what is this let's see if we break out from around here 10,500, that's our resistance, right? Our weekly resistance, we'll be showing that soon too. But if you guys have been following this week, that is resistance on the weekly time frame. It does line up. And what if we have the bull flag target over here, break out from around here? Uh, 11,300, uh, 11, this, this will match up with this, right? In fact, I shouldn't be drawing this over here. I should be drawing this over here too. And yep, so 11,300-ish. <laughs> Do we, do, maybe we have a, maybe something does line up over there. I do remember 11,400-ish being an important level. But yeah, that is the six-hour time frame, guys. It will just add a booster if it lines up with our weekly and monthly levels, right? Do we want to look at a daily? We talked about the daily yesterday, I do believe. So no, I don't want to spend too much time on the mid or the lower time frames anymore. I am going to clear out all the lines. Remove this, remove this, remove this. And we're going to go straight on over to the monthly and then on to the weekly, all right? Uh, monthly, 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 because I, I talk about the weekly so much. I think I should be spending more time on the monthly now. We are taking on the 20th and we have 10 more days before we close the month and auto. All right, so here we have the monthly. And if you guys do remember all the way back in March, during our Corona candle right over here, we were eyeing a major, major support line, right? Well, at the time we weren't sure whether it was gonna be a support line or our resistance line, but 6,380-ish guys, if you guys Go back and watch those videos. <laughs> that entire month was very, very special. Very special. And our first clue was when the month closed over 6,380. We're like, guys, 
now bitcoin is beginning to show some bullish signs now i didn't flip bullish just yet i wanted to see more unfold right we had that game plan we said okay this is the first sign 6400 ish then we came and tested it again right right over here and again we got a bounce of this level right so we closed the monthly over it we came down to test it again and bounced above it and closed the daily candles above it too right so the monthly level there was clearly being respected now we are beating up against a another monthly level in fact we are currently living above it on first glance but hey we've seen this in the past right living above a monthly level but then come down to close underneath it now let's go ahead and mark it out i'll be looking at these candles over here these candles over here it is a really really nice area we can see it lining up with around 9350 ish right don't need to get it exact in fact we can use this high over here of the previous month which was 9485 look at that so let's go ahead and adjust it a little bit okay so around 9350 should 9000 we can mark it as a zone in fact let's go ahead and do that okay cool so we have our resistance zone over there 9380 ish to 9400 ish blah blah and we can go ahead and mark the middle of our resistance too now and again you guys know how i do this i'm not it doesn't need to be perfect but does does line up really well damn again let's go ahead and just see if does that line up with 50 that's exactly 50 percent so you're seeing how well these play out guys i'm pretty sure that if we go down what what level is that is that 7700 7, lining up with that key level everybody's looking for if we switch to the daily level quickly you're going to see that we probably had a major not seeing that so Got not seeing a horizontal let's go ahead and mark this one quick tip you can mark you can um, adjust your visibility to keep your charts clean and as you guys can see my monthly levels when i put them on my month monthly chart do not show up on my daily and my weekly um chart right so i'm going to go ahead and mark that on tick that on rather switch back on over to the daily and see what we have over here and you can see look at this right over here this candle you can see how well the monthly levels are being respected guys right as soon as we started having moves above it probably on the four hour time frame 12 hour time frame boom thrust to the upside and yeah you can see how key that level was 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 key over here too right so being respected really really well switch back on over to the monthly time frame bitcoin ticking down as we speak okay so what am i looking at right now we have our top of the range middle of the range and bottom of the range well we're looking for the month to close above this if the month can close above 9350 ish to 9450 ish then i'll be looking towards well we can use a horizontal array now first target would be here if we take this region out then then that's when the volatility is going to come so what's the target here 10,800 ish right so if we close a monthly candle this month's candle above 9,350 ish 9,450 ish then i will be eyeing this level over here at around 10,750 ish 10,760 to be exact guys now this is where it gets a little hard right because we do have this wick over here that is a major wick on the weekly time frame that could cause an explosive move but keep in mind guys this this level over here 10760 that is a monthly level and a month has 30 days to play out so the week may go ahead and put in a higher high much much higher in fact in fact we may get all the way up to the next monthly level and see resistance at around 13,970 right which lines up perfectly with where we got rejected on this run up over here look at that look how perfect that is guys around 13,800 ish lines up so well with these candle closes over here right very very simple and again simple stress-free but often uncomfortable okay just like we talked about in the beginning of the video now again i'm going to go back to what i just mentioned weekly levels that we're going to talk about very very soon lines up at 10,500 ish monthly however is going up all the way up to 10,783 so you have to keep those major levels in mind when placing your trades guys now let's go ahead and remove everything okay right now the key levels to be um Taking into mind on the monthly time frame is 9,450-ish and around 10,780-ish, right? Just remember those levels. I'm going to remove everything so we have a clean chart and switch on over to the weekly time frame. What are we looking at over here? Well, we go ahead and mark out, um, I'll be looking at this guy over here, okay? Lines up with this wick over here so we can go ahead and mark out that zone. Lines up with what? Our major 10,400, 10,500 level wick over here, right? Then another key level over here would be this guy. And that is what? That is a support level, right? That I do believe 9,600-ish. Push it down a little bit more to make that line up. 
that that is our cloud level too so if you guys remember from yesterday's video we can show it to you very very quickly it is lining up and you are seeing support of it we've come and tested three times i do believe on the lower time frames and each time we're getting picked up i am waiting for this big up thrust which will line up with a break on the six hour the four hour time frames to these levels over here which is going to cause a cascading of moves this is one of the reasons why in the duo video that i did with krisha a few days ago even though she's looking at the top of the cloud i do think that if we do come up here we're going to pulverize the cloud i do think that it's going to go all the way through have a major move to well what do you know eleven thousand five hundred, right we were talking about um in the beginning of the video our measured move for what the six hour time frame was lining up with that eleven thousand four hundred region and hey what do you know there you go our weekly levels are over there in fact you can mark this out as a zone using these guys here this is how I remember the 11,400 region, guys. I remember when we were trading this area. Do you guys remember it? Um, since Jean is back in Mango, um, in the Mango Grove, he probably remembers this because he he was with us when we were trading this level. So was Joshua. Um, some of the OGs are coming back to the Mango Grove. Glad to have you guys back, by the way. Um, we, this was a trap, right? We were looking for a candle close above the weekly, and we got the candle close. And what happens right after? Boom, got dumped into right, right next week so this was the key level 11,400 and the six hour consolidation bull flag whatever the hell you want to call it is lining up with a break that has a mesh move to around this region over here who knows we may actually come put in a high high on the weekly time frame and this that's actually going to be extremely bullish even if we get rejected over here i'll be looking to buy a higher low be hunting for it i have to think about where it comes take it once at a time but for now let's see if it plays out let's see if it plays out a lot of rambling a lot of forecasting a lot of like if this then that but that's what trading is guys you got to kind of have a plan for now we are i am i am sitting tight in my position 8500 ish 8450 is where i got into my position taking easy trades waiting patiently i talked about where i'm invalidated on my trade Let's go ahead and do a quick um, update on that. I talked about how I will be okay making a decision on the lower time frames. And by the lower time frame, I'm talking about the 12 hour time frame. If we see a candle close underneath 9,300, I am out of the trade. Or if we um, see a wick underneath 9,111 ish, I'm out, out of my trade. Again, the trade may develop and things may change. So do not use anything I am saying as a signal. I am basing my decisions of the fact that I am long from 8,450 ish. Would I be having those same decisions if um, I'm taking a trade over here? No. Okay. Be very, very careful with it, guys. Be very careful with that. Okay. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about? Okay. We can go ahead and look at the mango vine. That's the reason why I was taking the trade right over here. Mango vine gave a really, really nice call. And in fact, all these over here too, these these were good calls on the mango vine. You could have been taking these trades. Yes, they are less explosive or, um, of a move. But it is very, very similar to look, over here. Mango Wine called the top, gave us a nice bounce trade towards the upside. This is the one Krisha took where it flipped for the first time green after a very, very long time. And she rode it all the way to the top too. And um, again, let's come all the way over here. And we'll turn on the 12-hour Mango Vine. And I want to show that each time. Okay, so again, over here, it called the bottom really, really well. And you guys can be aggressive about this. And you can take a long or you could, if you want, just close out your shots. Since I wasn't in a short position this time around, I did take a long. I don't often um, get that aggressive, but 3,600 is what David gave me. And it was a gift because we had that slippage or not, not slippage, but you could say um, really, really nice discount on those September futures. And I took, I took that aggressive trade. It did line up with a major, major horizontal too, right? So again, I want to tell you guys, the reason I'm mentioning that is because I don't want any of you to be trading the vine in isolation as as strong as you guys may think it is, always, always, always know that you need to have confirmation with your other indicators as well, right, guys? Be very, very careful. All right, we're going back to what I wanted to talk about before I derailed. What I was trying to say is that when you're playing the 12-hour wine, the first and the second move are going to be your most powerful moves. That's the one that's going to give you your biggest wins. And after that, of course, as the trend starts waning out, it's going to give you less and less of a win, right? Unless you see a massive, massive trend. So over here too, for example, the, the real call was right over here, right? It called it at, this is the one I missed. Krisha's birthday, that was my excuse. At around 8,700, um, when did it actually flip short? So around here, 
I don't know, you can say 8,800, 8,700, it doesn't matter. You can you could have even taken it over here at 8,200. And that was your big Corona candle, right? 53% move. Then you had your second move, which was the long I took when we flashed tail over here. And well, that was another big 89% move. Now, I didn't ride it all the way till there. I closed out my positions around 6,300. And that's when I started going for the short position, right? Remember, I was bearish. I was clearly wrong to be bearish. We broke to the upside. But um, I took the short over here because the mango vines following my system guys i'm very rule based keeps me um i'm not 100 rule based i'm like more like 85 rule based keeps my bad um habits out of the way so again follow the rules and took the trade and what was the move we got a 20 percent move right so look at that first a 50 percent move nice 100 percent move and then a 20 percent move so that's what i mean that be very very careful guys Always keep in mind the, the overall picture of what is going on. And yep, so we talked about weekly, talked about monthly. And why did we even start talking about this? Oh yeah, because of... I, the reason I want to talk about this is because I don't want you guys to blindly put on trades over here expecting, yeah, the vine is calling it, I'm going long. No, no, no. Be good, be good, guys. All right. Um, there's so many trades that will come your way, guys. Just, just be patient, be patient. Wait for the easy trades. Do the stress-free way, do the mango way. All right, so is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, do, 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 talked about, did we talk about 12 hour, 12 hour, yeah. So it's, I, it's, even if you feel like we're going to break down, guys, you cannot be bearish just yet. You cannot be bearish just yet, all right? So keep your emotions out of it. I'm, I'm doing just that. Even though I feel like we may break down, it's looking better and better as the days go, go by, right? And I'm feeling better and better about staying in my trade. Yesterday, I was uncomfortable. Today, I'm getting more comfortable. You know when I'll be the most comfortable? After we break to the upside and we start clearing all this. That's when I'm going to be really, really comfortable and really, really happy. So until then... Looking good on the daily, we do have this major juncture here. If we do lose 21 EMA and the 10 kin, then hey, maybe we can start looking for short positions down to the daily 200. After we break this 8,000 level over here, um, we can go ahead and mark it quickly. This wick over here lines up with this wick, these wicks too, right? The zone. If we break the zone here, um, 7,800 to around 8,000 ish, then we can have continuation. That will likely take us down to around 7,300. After 7,300, we're likely going to um, come down to these levels over here, 6,400. And that is the target that I'm looking for on a monthly basis, right? That's why I wanted to start off with the monthly levels. A lot of people were um, asking me, hey, Sean, why 6,400 ish? Now you know, right? It is a major monthly level. Do we come down exactly over there? No, of course not. We are likely going to put in a higher wick, maybe a lower wick, who knows? But around there, around there. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and talk about Link. We can start with Link BDC. Yesterday, I um I talked about that major, major weekly level, right? All right, here we have Link BDC on the weekly time frame, and we were talking about this major trend line, right? We've been talking about it for weeks now weeks right and when we came down here two weeks ago that's when we took our trade now yesterday i've, I've not been watching link for a while but i looked at it because of you, you guys and i forgive give you guys props and credit because i would have missed this if it hadn't been for you guys and i did put on a trade not a big position because i wanted to add to my position this morning i did not and um yeah we basically bounced off it again right and this is how you take you can take the same trade over and over and over again very simple very stress-free just be patient and it does come back to you right and we can go ahead and look at it on the low time frame you'll see a lot of similarities right over here wick down to very very close to our trend line remember we're using our trend line as a guide and came very close down to it and bounced right off right we had taken a trade off this level over here and then waited for um candle closes off this w over here added on the retest look how beautiful that is guys look how beautiful you can just draw a horizontal here got a nice retest and trust the, towards the upside so you can take a startup position if you're not sure right if you're like you know what i'm not I'm not feeling too good about this right I'm, I'm uncomfortable uncomfortable because it's looking so bad but remember we played it all the way to the downside and we knew this was a major level that we want to take profits because we're shorting this to the downside and we're eyeing this right then we start seeing this rounded bottom we saw the reaction on this candle over here the way i did again just going a little bit off topic saw the reaction of this candle over here saw a nice reaction a lot of bearishness until this candle over here okay cool this lining up with my thesis that this is major weekly support took an initial position added, my, added to our position boom to the upside now very very similar wow what do you know lines up 
wicked off that level very close to our trend line accumulated double rounded bottomish kind of formation call it what you will again very very similar it was literally the same trade broke to the upside this time however did not get the beautiful retest right over here got the beautiful retest this time nope seeing continuation now um where do we go i do think we have resistance very soon somewhere over here first and then over here too actually we are breaking it as we speak so we've tested once tested twice breaking it as we speak so hey um i did not get as good of a position this time around but it is what it is i did get a position on another trade that i do want to um give credit to one of the mango members let's go ahead and check on it because i was waiting for the 12 hour candle close we close the 12 hour candle and um it's 12 hour and this coin ladies and gentlemen i'm not taking a trade on atom in a very very long time and i just did Props to Danny. And what do you know? Thank you, Adam. Thank you. See it through for me. See it through. So essentially, I, I was taking my trade on the one hour time frame, but um, I was basing it off the higher time frames, especially the 12 hour time frame. And you can see that right over here. Broke on over to the upside. Test, test, test. And boom, right? So a couple of hours ago, actually, just uh, two hours before I started doing the video. We got a nice test into this major horizontal zone over here and we're seeing that continuation on to the upside as we speak so this is how you know that you are right on your thesis do you have to be right on your thesis thesis no right i'm wrong all the freaking time i'm wrong all the freaking time and this time around i've been wrong um if we wicked underneath here at uh, 260 i would have been out of the trade or if we close the 12 hour candle underneath 263 uh, 264 i would have actually been looking um for at least a 12 hour plus a four hour so four hours after this i would have been like okay you know what that's it it says had its time to break over the zone i'm not going to look for it anymore and that was my thesis my invalidation points always have your invalidation point that's how you get to keep your losses small get out of it forget it and move on you'll find another trade opportunity again um i was not only looking at this horizontal the reason uh, i do want to give props to danny where is telegram 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 he did mention it first all right so right over here you guys can see it i hope you can at the very least um i said look at this and i was looking at the bitcoin pairing at the time and i said props to danny soothsayer for pointing me to it and he replies with right after talking about food um right over here i, do. I was looking at the usd pairing but it doesn't matter because you pointed me towards the usd pairing danny i went and looked at the bitcoin pairing and the way i do it is like okay the bitcoin pairing is looking really really good as well right they're putting in an ascending triangle what else did you notice you notice that the mango vine had flipped green on it i'm like okay cool the mango vine on the 12 hour has been looking has been get, nailing it recently right especially on the usd pairings well on the bitcoin pairings as well but okay the usd pairing is looking really really good okay um the wine flipped yeah uh flipped uh long for it and the bitcoin pairing is looking really really good what else do we have well we can go ahead and also look let me turn this telegram thingy off it's gone off nope not yet is this no that's not it either man i'm so bad at this okay there we go okay it's gone okay so we had that we had the the vine um the usd pairing looking good the bdc looking up uh, bdc pairing looking good too and then we can go ahead and look at the mango research dashboard and we're going to type atom in the filter box over here and switch on over to the four hour time frame why the four hour time frame because i want to see what the most recent momentum is giving us right because remember we're looking for a break and continuation of this major level over here rather we already had the break okay we had the retest now what i want to see is do we have the trend on our side and what do you know um we did get the trend indicating long on the four hour time frame and this was 14 hours ago okay and it's maintained long for at least three four hour candles right because remember we got it 14 hours ago so three four hour candles it's maintained it and hey that's giving me confidence atom btc has also flipped and that's what i'm looking for right this is what i'm looking for so this was actually short okay this was actually um indicating short when i put on the trade and i was able to put on the trade why because we had the wine giving us that long signal atom btc was in an ascending triangle and atom usd had already broken to the upside so if atom usd starts seeing the continuation atom btc is likely going to flip long too and what do you know is seeing it all confluence together and this is the magic of looking at the holistic picture guys right now you guys know what i mean by do not use anything in isolation okay use all the techniques we uh, teach over here and all of these tools all of these tools that that we provide you guys with are boosters and do you really need any of these tools guys do you need um the dashboard do you need the vine no you do not you do not 
I did this, um, I did all of this before I had any of these tools. You don't need these tools either, all right? Let me tell you that, I'll tell you that outright, you do not. So do not rely on them. If you do not need something, do not rely. All right, so now let's go ahead and quickly talk about targets for Atom before I wrap this up. Where am I looking for targets? Well, we are sitting against some um, resistance right now, but um, I'm not too concerned about that resistance. I am more concerned about this region over here where I will be looking to take some off the table. You can use this, you see this candle over here, guys? Um, the one on 30th April, you can use that as a guide. I'm gonna be marking the candle close over there and marking the wick as well and you can see it matches up perfectly with this cluster over here now um we may come and front run this area over here uh, am i looking to get a little bit more cautious and put some bids over here to take some profits maybe maybe i'll have to think about it but um for now i'll be eyeing this region 293 to 3 um 10 thick zone yes but the volatility in all coins are volatility in all coins right what kind of percent is that a good 11 percent to our first target and around 17 percent to the second target right so that's what i'll be looking at and is there anything else i want to talk about um you can go ahead and look at the mango vine this is where it flipped um green right over here on this candle so right when we close the candle got the confirmation always wait for confirmation and yep done took the trade mango vine dashboard have your horizontals and also you have the BTC pairing looking really really good right so all put together like what we see holistic trading stress-free trading the mango way you do it that way too and hey in the long run you will be stress-free and profitable consistently see you guys in tomorrow's video